Holocaust survivor Simon Wiesenthal once said, humor is the weapon of the unarmed. It helps people who are oppressed to smile at the situation that pains them. A fitting quote for our next story. Kimberly Norris Guerrero is a Native American actress from Idabel, Oklahoma, a small town girl who's made it big out in Hollywood. But it's one of her early roles, more than two decades ago, that focused our attention on the subtle racisms that still linger. For a TV show described about being about nothing, Seinfeld used humor to often broach some very serious subjects. Jerry, I really need it back. It is mine. Well, but you can't give something and take it back. I mean, what do you... Uh... In the episode, The Cigar Store Indian, Kimberly Norris Guerrero made her primetime debut that, uh, as Jerry's well, Native American love interest. An iconic role, Kimberly says, she was born to play. You mean like an Indian giver? I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with that term. <laughs> and comedy is my wheelhouse. That's what I love. Anybody that's been to McCartan County, and I think in Oklahoma in general, I think humor is, is an aspect that define us as Oklahomans, and for, for sure Native American Oklahomans. I mean, you can't be with a Native person in Oklahoma and not be laughing hysterically within five minutes. Adopted at five and a half months, Kimberly grew up in the Oklahoma hills of Idabel. There was always a sense of being very, very loved and very protected and very included, just as you would if you were a biological child. But I grew up in a time of like the Sesame Street era where there was this little like song that they would sing on Sesame Street, one of these things is not like the other. And so I always kind of felt like, oh yeah, I'm, the, I'm that one, I'm, I'm the different one. But it was never in a bad way. It was never in a way that made me feel less than or made me feel um, unloved or, or as an outsider. It was just other. An idyllic childhood made all the richer by her Native American heritage. Mom told me when I was, um, and it was brilliant the way she, she presented it to me, I was three and a half or four, and I know it was definitely before I started school, and she, you know, she explained to me that I was adopted and what that meant and, and, and how much they loved me. And she even had a book um, because uh, there was, my biological mom had put the information about my tribal heritage with my birth certificate. In this book, it says that my great-grandmother, Christine George, was the granddaughter of Chief Seattle. And they actually called her an Indian princess. And so that was their perception, was that, you know, if you're a chief's daughter, you're an Indian princess. So you tell a four-year-old that. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, this is, <laughs> I'm an Indian princess. I have a responsibility to the world, to my people, to all people. And at four years old, it was like, okay, I can do this. And then at the same time, my father served on the orphanage board. Mm -hmm. There was a, 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 and it was primarily Choctaw, Choctaw kids that were there. And so we would go out and my dad had a department store growing up, a little, you know, country store in Idabel. And, um, and so we would take out jeans and coats and things like that in the winter. And, and so I went with him this one day. It was still before, probably around that time. And it shook me to my core when I'm sitting in a nice warm station wagon with my dad on a Sunday afternoon, right after Thanksgiving. And we're dropping off all these, these nice clothes. And I saw all these kids that looked just like me that look just like me. And they're, they're just sitting out on the, the front porches of, you know, essentially these like group homes. And, it, and that's really when it hit, hit. It was like, there's, I'm no different. That, like the, that is me. That was, you know, preschool age for me. That's kind of what I hooked onto. It ended up being, you know, just kind of this like, this drumbeat to my life of like, how do I serve? How do I serve humanity? How do I serve our indigenous people? How do I serve the, the people around me that I love? And so began her interest in her native roots, taking her all the way to Los Angeles to study Native American history and follow her other passion. I remember exactly the day that I decided I wanted to go to UCLA and I was watching, you know, being a good Oklahoma girl, I was obsessed with college football with everybody else and, and we were watching the USC UCLA game happen to be on that weekend and I saw this beautiful pom-pom girl, Barbie doll of a human being with UCLA in her chest and the blue and gold pom-pom and I just went, that's what I'm going to do when I grow up. But you did. And I did. I mean, again, it was like this delusional thing. <laughs> I'm like, that's what I want to be. And from that time on the sideline came Kimberly's big break. So a casting director came to the game and saw us and had myself and another girl come audition for an AT&T commercial. 
and I ended up getting that commercial. And I promise you, I think it was more just how goofy and off the turnip truck I had just fallen. The guy just, they said, bring a headshot. I had no idea what a headshot was. So I brought my senior picture from Ida Bell. <laughs> and I had, I mean, you know, like the, the one that's like the Olin Mills, like the really nice, you know, thick one. <laughs> and so they, um, so I did my little audition. And I said, and I left the casting office and I came back and I said, can I get that back? And they just fell out laughing. So they made a photocopy of it, wrote my information down and gave me the, and I got that part. <laughs> and that role got me, it was a national commercial, it got me into Screen Actors Guild. Okay. And so, um, and it also really, it, I made a lot of money on that commercial, I had no idea. You made residuals, you know, so these checks kept coming in and I, all of a sudden my parents, I think, were not so afraid of me going into the acting. It's like, that's just, this is a significant amount of money for one night of work. Yet Kimberly stayed in school, earning her Native American Studies degree. I personally didn't have any Native professors in history at UCLA, which was a fantastic program, but there were no Natives teaching Native history. I was like, how cool would that be? But rather than fall back, Kimberly caught on. A big role had just come out uh, for a miniseries called Son of the Morning Star that ABC was doing. And then it just kind of rolled from there. I went to work on As It Will Turns. By the grace of God, right after that, um, I got Northern Exposure and um, I played Ed's girlfriend on Northern Exposure and I got the Seinfeld, the epic Seinfeld job. No, it's late. I should probably just go home. I, I had no idea. Hey, Jerry, look what I got. <laughs> And from there, Kimberly began playing predominantly Native characters. I was wrong. I feel emptier than before. <laughs> if I wasn't the, the classic Native maiden, you know, I, I probably would have gotten a lot more work. But I just, it's okay. I mean, I really, it's beyond okay. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to have, you know, carved this path. That led her to her favorite role. Oklahoma native and Cherokee chief, Wilma Mankiller. I'm not considering running for deputy chief. I am running. Talk about like now stepping up to the plate. That was still, that even for me was a little bit, you know, overwhelming to think about trying to fill, you know, those shoes of such an iconic woman and leader and um, thinker and just an incredible human being. but. Getting to come back to Oklahoma really, it, it gave me a lot of peace. Like, no, I'm, I'm home and this is, this is one of our stories. Being able to, to take the two things that I love, which is home, Oklahoma, and filming, I'm like, I'm happiest on a film set. So to have, to be on a film set in Oklahoma, you know, is just, it was a, the joy of my life. And to get to be telling Wilma's story. And it was actually how I was able to connect with how am I going to be, I, Kimberly, how am I going to be able to, to to personify this, this woman that's bigger than life. And, and Wilma herself said, she said, at, at the heart, at my heart, I'm a cheerleader. And when I heard her say that, I'm like, okay, we're good. We're good, because at my heart, I'm a cheerleader. And so that's where I built, sort of building the character from. Um, and, just, and just always re remembering, you know, that, that shared common thing that we had about, you know, just cheering other people on and helping them be their best. And just to remember why I love this place so much. And with those lessons learned, Kimberly's life has started to come full circle. While still actively acting, she's also producing now, currently shopping a reality TV series focused on Native peoples, as well as working with tribal communities throughout North America as a public speaker and an advocate for personal and community development. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Kimberly, I do have my full interview with her streaming on our website. Not only is she a delightful person, she has valuable insights well worth the watch. Just look for it under our value-added section at OKHorizon.com.